Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by Steve Powers, the GM of security at Barracuda Networks. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. So we'd like to break down all the action, and, and we can't not talk about security. Every single show for the past year and a half that we've been to, whether it's been enterprise or cloud, security's always the hot button. And it's been that way forever. We've interviewed uh, Illumio yesterday, hot startup that's, that's burning the boats, as they said. They're, they're in it to win it, going big or going home. Um, around perimeterless security, right? So you guys are in this game with a lot of customers from, from the heritage of Barracuda with the appliance from spam filtering and firewalling now to fully baked out technologies now. Where are you guys with security vis-a-vis -vis this big cloud trend which is perimeterless? That's right, well I think that the, the big thing as you mentioned is that we really stand for total threat protection and really what that's about is securing all the network threat vectors and whether those threat vectors uh, come in over email, from a web application, through remote access, from browsing uh, by users on the network, by mobile users, or even the network itself. It's been very, very important to protect all the threat vectors. What's changed as we've uh, gone to this perimeterless uh, uh, network here is that, uh, that the attack surface has changed pretty dramatically. And so we've seen a lot of the attack surface move from physical networks to virtual networks, and now as, as we've, we've moved out to SaaS and the public cloud, it's just a much broader attack surface, and we're committed to protecting that. So I got to ask you about application security, because you can lock the front door and put all the defenses on the perimeter, but applications are calling out with API notifications, the fire rules are huge, all these policies have been around. So there's a legacy on, let's just say, firewalling, and then now you've got apps coming out inside the firewall, shooting out notifications. That's so right. how do you do that? How do you guys deal with that? And, and what are your, what's your advice to your customers? Yeah, well I think the, uh, the, the first thing is awareness. The first thing is awareness. You know, a lot of people in the old days uh, of spam actually said, hey, I have a firewall in front of my email server. And I think what people actually recognized was that, you know, firewalls don't block spam. It's not what they were designed to do. And what's interesting is that web application attacks uh, also don't get blocked by firewalls. You need a special kind of technology for that. And just like how a you know, a spam firewall isn't really a firewall, it's an email server. Uh, what people have to recognize is to protect web applications, you really need web reverse proxies. A firewall won't block those. And where, do you, where is those proxies being native? Are you binding it right in the application? And with virtualization, what changes with this? Is, is there, I mean, it's kind of, it's compli it sounds complicated, is it? It, it, it can it? be, I think, but that's one of the real powers that, uh, uh, that something like a, an AWS environment provides. I think in historical data centers, a lot of people look to reverse proxies as another bump on the wire, another thing that would need to be you know, scaled and another thing that would be kept operational. But I think that one of the things that really is a, the power of the cloud is that rolling out sort of this new service-oriented architecture uh, where, where different functions are distributed you know, throughout different compute loads and you know, throughout different virtual servers is something that just becomes de rigueur. And so we're seeing a lot more openness in this, uh, in this whole cloud environment to doing that. Okay, so I got to ask the question. Barracuda um, has this great business. Now you see Amazon making moves. New cloud is obviously happening. How do you guys approach? What's the, what's the partnership motion look like with Barracuda and Amazon? How do you guys work with them? I mean, they, I mean you guys have your groove swing business. They got their machine that's being built and built and built. Uh, just kind of you know, new services being announced. It's certainly all cloud. Um, but what's the motion? What do you guys do? How's the value? What's the conversations like? Well, you know, <laughs> one of the things is, is that we are just, uh, you know, at the show obviously, we've been spending time meeting with our counterparts at Amazon, and I think that one of the things that, that we both feel really passionate about is the end customer. So there's a whole bunch of machinations in terms of how you go to market, but at the end of the day, I think that where we're really aligned is, is around the customer. And for us, that is, uh, for Barracuda, that's the mid-market IT professional who wears lots of hats, who, uh, who can't really uh, be a, a specialist in every area. And as Amazon has looked to its customers, they, they often uh, use the term, you know, the whole stack engineer. And so it's, it's the same kind of principle that, uh, 
uh, that in fact you got to do what's actually right for the customer to facilitate new paradigms. And so we've already started working through a set of initiatives with, um, with Marketplace, you know, obviously. So we have a number of, of customers who, who want to yeah. go download Barracuda products as, as AMIs, and that, that's certainly one, one path to market. And I think that one of the things that, that we're both looking forward to is increasing ways that we can both leverage uh, partners like managed services providers, traditional IT resellers, and others who can really partake in this overall you know, go-to-market you know, type of ecosystem. So, talk about the, for the folks out there, I'd like you to share your opinion about what, why is Amazon so disruptive? I mean, obviously they're doing well. Um, some say they're hiding the ball on the numbers. Um, this black box, Andreessen Horowitz tried to unpack it recently in a blog post that they did. I mean, everyone wants to know what, what Andy Jassy has under the hood. We all know it's scaling. But why are customers going there? What's your take and what's the landscape look like for the folks that are trying to understand Amazon? the forces of Amazon, good and bad. Why is Amazon so compelling? Well, I think that what it really is, it's democratizing uh, very, very uh, large scale operations. And so it used to be that you had to be a large Fortune 500 company to be able to afford to have you know, the data center operations uh, with the level of sophistication uh, that, that Amazon is providing. And one of the things that I think it's very compelling for Barracuda's segment of the marketplace is that, that now all of a sudden, um, Barracuda style managed services providers and even Barracuda style end customers can actually begin to appreciate the kinds of SLAs and the kinds of scalability and the kinds of infrastructure that was you know, previously just reserved for the big guys. And that's a great point. You now have more creativity, more available to you uh, with Amazon. So I got to ask you the question. So I was talking last night at the um, um, press dinner, uh, press uh, event with Jeff Barr, who's the chief evangelist for Amazon. It's been around for you know, a long time. I've known him back in the day when Amazon just started. He was just doing home, he was blogging basically. We were talking about some projects that we were developing uh, kind of together and separately at the same time, which was around the whole blogging revolution. And he had one of the ping servers back in the day and, and uh, he made a comment to me, he said, if Amazon had existed then, I would have blown it out and, and basically would have done all these things. But at the time, as an entrepreneur, you couldn't, it was out of reach. It was risky because you had to spend some money, right? That's right. The vision wasn't totally big, so there was no risk-free way to get in there. So now we have a new model where, as you said, you can do things now like a large company. So the question is, with that kind of a backdrop, what is it that customers can do now that you see them with Barracuda using Amazon for? Because if that premise was then, it's still now, there are some things that you say, you know what, I never could have had that go for that ask because it's too big of a reach. I need a data center, but now with Amazon, what's gettable for business? What can they do? What's right, well different? I think that, that one of the things that, uh, that it really provides is uh, you know, the scalability. I think one of the, the real tricks, you know, particularly in Barracuda's segment of the market, is the cost of over-provisioning. Um, you know, for example, we have a number of, of customers who operate. You mean customers over-provisioning for headroom Oh, Absolutely. Well, a good example is just very, very seasonal businesses. You know, there are a lot of, uh, uh, of Barracuda business, Barracuda customers who operate, for example, in retail, where there's obviously seasonality uh, within retail, yeah. where you get uh, big during certain buying seasons yeah, yeah. Uh, and small during others. Even in um, environments like uh, higher ed, as an example, uh, the school registration system needs a lot of, of, of availability uh, during, the, uh, during the end of quarter and beginning <laughs> of quarter, not so much in between. And so you really run into, you know, across a wide variety of customers. Um, and it's not just high visibility. You know, we, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, Coca-Cola, for example, up at the APN uh, Summit doing a keynote. We had Condé Nast, very, very high visibility brand names. But you know, there are very many ordinary businesses that have the exact same kinds of requirements. And really the, uh, really the costs of over-provisioning, the costs of, of, of trying to anticipate scale are just prohibitive for the typical business. And so I think Amazon um, presents a, a really interesting way to, uh, to get much, much bolder about how you want to take forward your online presence. It allows you to do some more innovative things with your, your marketing and your commercial angles. And it's able to do that in a, in a way that's, that's pay as you go and doesn't require such huge upfront capital or, uh, or, or funding to get done. So what kind of synergies do you see with Amazon, say Marketplace? I mean, obviously Barracuda, you guys have been that kind of business model, don't overspend, low cost appliance. I remember the early days, and even now, um, that's a real mandate of the company. But now with the marketplace, customers have choice. So they're going to buy and try new things. Is your value proposition with that integration? How do you guys see the opportunity for a business 
the business model side of well, it. Well, uh, and I'll give you a four-part answer, so I apologize in advance if it's, no, no, if it's a long one. Good. But, the, but the first is I think that, uh, that there's a lot of folks that we're seeing who just want to do the lift and shift. And so, uh, you know, so some of the things that we're actually doing there is making that really easy. So we've got a lot of folks, for example, who uh, have looked at things like email security uh, and, and liked the privacy that an on-premises uh, appliance would give them and simply allowing our uh, spam and virus firewalls to, uh, to actually be run up in uh, AMIs uh, up in the cloud actually allows that lift and shift to happen transparently. You know, the second is, as people are actually Explain looking- Explain lift and shift for the folks out there who don't know sure, what lift and sure. shift is. Sure, sure, it's basically taking something that you used to do on premises and just moving it in place out into the cloud so you can get the management benefits of the cloud without changing your workflows. Yeah. And you don't need a forklift to do that, do you? You don't, you absolutely <laughs> don't. It happens very, very transparently. In fact, our customers spin up the AMI off the marketplace, they move their configuration from their on-premises system up to the cloud and change DNS records and you go. It's, yeah. it's simple. The, um, uh, 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 the, other, the other aspect here is, is folks who want to actually take their, their public facing applications and improve the security. You know, in this past year's uh, Verizon data breach report, the 2014 Verizon data breach report, it was shown that 35% of the breaches were actually related to web application attacks. And so we're definitely seeing that as, uh, as, as sort of the threats continue to evolve, organizations wanting to start taking advantage of new protections. And as mentioned earlier, the cloud makes it so easy to go do that we're seeing a number of customers who as they're moving their applications to the uh, public facing applications to the cloud, having an opportunity to very easily improve their security there. So that's one, one area we're playing. A third area is really as, uh, as people want to extend their internal applications for more capacity or availability uh, off, uh, uh, off in the cloud. I and mean, one of the, the big powers of the cloud is just the geographic dispersion. And we have uh, a lot of customers who, in physical data centers, just couldn't afford to set them up uh, where they may have had all their customers or where they had all their employees. And so, with this whole ability with the, uh, the cloud to be geographically dispersed, you know, there are a number of advantages. So you see the customers redefining architecture based a upon what's available in the cloud. Absolutely, it was always sort of desired architecture, but impractical. Yeah. And so one of the things that Barracuda is doing is helping customers provide connectivity, primarily through our, our next generation firewall and VPN technologies to, to get across multiple locations. And really the, the last element, uh, which is the area that we really talked about, is that you want to really start taking advantage of new cloud economics, not just to take advantage of geographic dispersion, but also around the, the compute elasticity and the ability to grow the environment. So that is, um, you know, that's an area that we're very excited about. Yeah, so lift and shift is, okay, my existing business, and then the re-architecture using the cloud is the, you know, fulfilling a dream. Basically, I can do more with the scale and as Andy Jassy likes to say, experiment. He used that word, I, I find it interesting that he used that word experiment because what he's saying is, you know, he's trying to mitigate the risk management kind of in, as, in an entrepreneurial way by saying, yeah, take, do an experiment. If it fails, don't, you know, just say it was an experiment. But that's good, you can do that at low cost and go out and test an architecture um, with, the, with that thesis. So, um, that's awesome. So I got to ask you on the show, explain to the folks out here, um, what's your observation? And if you had to, uh, as Jeff Frick just tweeted, put a bumper sticker on the, on the show, what would it be? You know what I, I think it might be is, uh, old concepts become uh, important to revisit. And, and what I mean by that is, if I, when I look at the show, I see so many things that, uh, that those of us who've been through many cycles in the industry have seen before. So, uh, for example, all of a sudden, uh, uh, consulting firms are, are added again because uh, people want to actually understand how to take advantage of new architectures. System management is becoming an important topic again. Log management. Containers. Yeah, log <laughs> management is becoming an, an important concept again. And it's because we have to revisit a lot of the old concepts. And certainly, um, you know, for us, uh, we see the security. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a, a hotter topic than many of, the, of these other topics uh, uh, as of late. But, but definitely it's, it's sort of revisiting old concepts as we, we start to really rethink, um, uh, uh, rethink old things. You know, I'm an old Oracle guy, so the, the whole Aurora uh, announcement to me is, is very, very intriguing. It's revisiting old concepts. What do you think about that announcement? It kind of had an Oracle undertone to it. You know, I, I, I think it really did. Um, you know, certainly, you know, I was... And they didn't uh, come out and do that. I don't know, I didn't hear him say the word Oracle. He didn't really say the word Oracle, and but I think that, that really when 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 you look at Oracle, it was really Oracle was really a, an attack on the old flat file ISAM databases of the past, 
Um, and I think when you look at, at this sort of horizontally scaled uh, database architecture, I mean, there are certainly going to be uh, 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 some questions to be asked, particularly with things like MySQL, you know, compatibility in an API layer. So it's, it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, so the old becomes the new again. So I would agree with you. It's interesting, I, Dave and Devante, who's not here, my co-host always and I talk about this, the mainframe is back again, but it's just broken down and reassembled with modern, off-the-shelf, distributed components. Well, and it's a, and it's a more horizontally scaled uh, mainframe. And you got open source in there, so, you know, same concepts, new tooling, new platforms, but no one really owns the platform anymore, right? So, you're seeing this kind of commoditization, the flattening of the ownership of the, quote, platform. Yeah, well We're it's in interesting to me, even, uh, even at the show here, even thin clients are being revisited again. <laughs> I was over and we we're, were looking about how to do uh, 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 you know, NVIDIA and ViewSonic with their thin clients. I mean, geez, that reminds me of the days of the X-Terminal. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, uh, you know, many old concepts are being revisited, but in, 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 in much more evolved ways. What do you think is the concept that people aren't seeing yet that's an old concept that will be big, that'll be a big part of this narrative, of this inflection point and shift that we're seeing? Yeah, well I think that the, the, the probably the biggest uh, part of the narrative is that, uh, uh, is that we, all, uh, we all need to become IT generalists again. I think that we, went, we definitely went through an area of, of massive specialization where you had, you know, for example, uh, people who would get certified very, very deep on Cisco. And people get certified very, very deep on database. People get certified very, very deep uh, on storage. Um, and so I think that, you know, even in the Microsoft environment, you see a lot of people getting very, very deep yeah. certifications in the Microsoft environment. And I think that one of the things that, uh, that really does, does emerge with all of these things just becoming building blocks is that, um, that the level of, I believe that the level of specialization that, uh, that is going to be expected of IT professionals um, is, is, is going to diminish, and that in fact the breadth is what's going to become very important. So I think and that a lot of the cycle. automation on the services side will become abstracted away. That's right. That's right. And, and so, and that's that. You, you got to remember that where where, where we kind of all started in the uh, the IT industry, uh, IT people had to be experts across a wide variety of, of services to kind of make everything work. And we we ushered in this era of specialization. And I think that, that now we're, we're going to be working at this less a component yeah. level and more at a system level. And I, would, I, would, I would totally agree with you. And I would also would add that they're also being required to be much more of a savvy, aware business person. That's right. Because now they have to look up and bring the front lines of the business into the IT closer. Meaning they have to respond to business outcomes. And, which and, is, we, yeah. and, and we can give it back. I mean, one yeah. of the, the things I really appreciated about the, uh, 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 the APN keynote yesterday with Coca Cola is uh, the CIO for Coca Cola, she actually gave the money that she saved back to marketing, you know, for branding. Yeah, and that's the new, the new normal, is actually lower cost and, and better performance. I got to ask you about the show. Give us, a quick, give us a quick plug. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Love Barracuda. Um, but, yeah, I'll give you the last word. Give us the update. Get the, put the plug in for Barracuda. You guys part of the test drive program. What are you doing with That's Amazon? That's right. So, so the here business. The give us the quick pitch. Absolutely. So here at the show, we remain very, very active in the AWS community. Uh, we launched our test drive of the Barracuda web application firewall that 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 launched just yesterday. So that uh, the people who just want to give the products a try uh, actually get their own instance uh, to play with. They actually we we provide instructions as to how to go run attacks against a vulnerable website and and what that, uh, and how to protect that in a web application firewall. Uh, we, uh, we actually announced at this show a, an AWS AMI version of our load balancer ADC. So what that enables is for organizations that actually want to maintain a hybrid environment between physical and AWS data centers, uh, they can actually uh, maintain the same traffic management policies across both their, uh, their physical and their cloud infrastructures. Um, we have uh, continued uh, to push forward uh, in our other uh, product areas, both with the Barracuda Spam Firewall in, in AWS, as well as the Barracuda NG Firewall in AWS. And we're continuing to march forward to really provide this total threat protection in the AWS infrastructure. Steve, thanks for coming on theCUBE. On the Steve Powell, the general manager of the security group at Barracuda Networks. Uh, here inside theCUBE, we're getting all the action uh, on the ground here at Amazon reInvent. Again, Andy Jassy took the stage today. Great demos, great partners, and again, tons of breakout sessions. We got a lot of guests coming. Stay tuned, wall-to-wall -wall coverage here on theCUBE. We'll be right back. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Stay tuned.